Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending September 10th. Before I get started with my two stories I have for this week, I want to tell you what happened to me this morning, and this kind of impressed me, and I even told the uh, cashier at the store that I was rather impressed by this. You've probably been in stores where the computers have gone haywire or they've lost power or things like that, and basically the store just has to shut down. Once in a while, if it's not too bad, they'll say, well, we can take cash customers only, but if things just totally shut down, they don't have any ability to handle it, and basically the store just, they ask all the customers to come up front, and uh, you can either wait around for it to be restored or you can just leave and come back and try again. Well, I was quite impressed with Tractor Supply. I went there this morning about Oh, I think it was around 9 o'clock, and I went in the store and I noticed the overhead lights, some of them were flashing quite a bit, so they were having some kind of power disruptions or something, and uh, I got up to the register with my purchase, and I noticed the cashiers were writing out hand receipts, and I thought, well, maybe these are just purchase orders, maybe, you know, once in a while Tractor Supply does take commercial stuff too. I've even used commercial purchase orders of Tractor Supply, but then I noticed customer after customer, they were handwriting out the receipts, and uh, when the lady, the last lady in front of me had her receipt, written out, I could tell that she'd uh, told the lady that the computers were down, and so for now they're writing out hand receipts, and I said, I'm quite impressed by that. Usually people have no clue how to do it the old-fashioned way and do hand receipts. They have to just do it with the computer. Okay, get back. <clears throat> they have to do it with the computer, or they can't do it at all. They're just not capable of handwriting receipts, but they not only were doing receipts for cash purchases, they would do it by credit card too. You could actually use your credit card. They would write the number down and they would give you a receipt. They had a triplicate form. They would give you the middle yellow one. They'd keep the pink and the white copy. And then the manager or whoever after the store's computers were back up again would run them and then you'd have your handwritten receipt as proof. So I thought that was really cool. Technology is great, but being able to do things when technology fails the old way, this is the first time ever I've seen a store actually do this. I mean, it, it's not really that difficult to do if you have a plan and you have something to do it, but this is the first time I've ever seen it done, and I think in the last 10, 15 years I've uh, seen the only way to deal with it is just basically the, keep the store from doing any business, and everybody just loses out, and they lose out on the business. So slower than normal, of course, you know, with handwritten receipts, it slowed everything down, but hey, you know, they got it done. So I'm really impressed. Tractor Supply, check them out. I don't know if it, if you've ever had anything like this happen in your area where people actually were able to write out hand receipts and keep keep doing business when the computer shut down, let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm interested in hearing. Okay, my uh, second article here is from Tom H. This is from Wolf Street. Uh, freight rail train, oh, well, let me, let me bring it up here so I can see the headlines, get everything up here. Okay, this is from Wall Street. Freight rail traffic plunges, haunting picture of transportation recession. I'll put the picture up here. There's 292, maybe even more by now, but close to 300 Union Pacific engines set idle on tracks in the Arizona desert along a major uh, expressway. And uh, the, according to the article here, total U.S. rail traffic as of April plunged 11.8%. Um, bulk commodities such as coal, oil, grains, and chemicals plummeted 16.1%. So they're really losing bad time, and especially with the flood of natural gas now. The ma I guess the biggest major coal miner and coal producer has uh, gone bankrupt now. They're, in, they're not even making ends meet, and with the uh, glut of natural gas, they're just shutting down uh, coal-fired uh, steam plants anymore and switching to natural gas as much as possible. I'm thinking in the future, too. I was thinking something that would really affect freight, too. Uh, maybe not in as big a way, but... Uh, people now, when they order stuff, they're so used to getting stuff in two days or quicker. I mean, Amazon pretty soon, I guess, is going to um, offer one day um, without paying uh, much extra. Now you can get one day with paying extra, but I think uh, Amazon's even looking to, in the future, uh, make most of your deliveries from Amazon Prime be done in one day. Well, you can't use train freight, uh, freight trains for stuff like that. I mean, if you want fast orders, trains just are not the way to do that. They're, they're the way to uh, haul bulk commodities and stuff like that, so... As far as, uh, I mean, I remember, you know, back decades ago, if you would order something, it would be more than likely sent uh, as part of his journey on a freight train. And uh, you wouldn't think anything of uh, ordering something. You'd order a mail order, obviously, and then wait a couple of weeks for it to come. And part of it would be a freight train and part of it would be truck. But I think now everything is pretty much switching to truck because people just want those quick deliveries now. And, I mean, now they're even talking about drones to get your, you know, deliveries within minutes of when you order or something like that by using drones but if you get a chance check out this article and it's uh 
Yeah, that picture is really impressive there, and that only shows just a small section of the four-mile long lineup of engines that some of them may go back into business, some of them may not. I don't really know. It's uh, kind of expensive to dispose of them just to scrap, but I guess you got to do what you got to do. And from NASA, the uh, mission was launched on Thursday. This is the OSIRIS-REx mission. Now, this mission is going to take quite a long time. It, uh, it launched Thursday, and, uh, well, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about here. NASA's first asteroid sampling mission launched into space at 7.05 Eastern Daylight Time Thursday from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida, beginning its journey that could revolutionize our understanding of the early solar system. Um, what it's basically going to do is it's going to fly out to uh, asteroid Bennu, B-E-N-N-U is the name of it, and it's going to actually take a sample and bring it back, but this is not going to take place on a really quick time scale. They're talking about from when it launches today, getting the sample back will occur sometime in 2023. And it says here, in 2018, OSIRIS-REx will approach Bennu, which is the size of a small mountain, and begin an intricate dance with the asteroid, mapping and studying Bennu in preparation for sample collection. In July 2020, the spacecraft will perform a daring mover, a daring maneuver in which its 11-foot arm will reach out and perform a five-second high five to stir up surface material, collect at least two ounces, 60 grams, of small rocks and dust in a sample return container. Osiris Rex will return the sample to Earth in September 2023, when it will then be transported to NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston for examination. Be the first U.S. mission to carry samples from an asteroid back to Earth, and the largest sample return to space since the Apollo era. So, if you get a chance, check that out. So, anyway, that's about it for this week. Um, take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.